Hey guys, Matira here. I know I haven't been doing a lot of tutorials um, lately, but I've been super busy. So hopefully this tutorial will make up for it. Um, there's not a lot of tutorials on pads, like how to make pads, at least not in Massive. And I know a lot of people like to use presets, but I, I just, I don't use presets. I told myself I'd stop doing that, and I did a long time ago, and I've been making my sounds ever since. But pads have always been something that have been, or that has been um, very hard for me to learn. And just recently, it just totally hit me. I was playing around with Massive, and I just, I got pad sounds. And I completely understand how to make most pads now. It's really cool. Um, so I'll be going over um, just pads in this tutorial. Maybe I'll do like a soundscape type tutorial. Um, but anyway, here's the sound that we're going to be making today, and it's all in Massive. There's no effects other than the Massive effects. Um, so yeah, here it is. I don't know chords, so, ah, oh well. So yeah, that sounds really cool. I really like it. And um, another thing we could do is, first of all, let me show you the type of quote-unquote chords I'm playing. So it's uh, three note chords. And really to get the best sound out of pads or any type of pluck sound is to layer it. So I'm just showing you guys how I would do chords. I piece it together one by one, and then I take it, I look at the bottom note, well I select all, I look at the bottom note, hold control, click it, and drag it up to the next octave, which is right there. So now if I take all this and I just make it really long, I can even bring this one down to D2 or D1. And I, I'll go over a trick on how to make that sound really cool um, once we do it. So I'll be going over the sound now. And uh, first of all, we could start by a new sound. So we do File, New Sound, and Massive. And the first thing we're going to want to do is bring all of these um, oscillators, um, route them to Filter 1. And now we have all squares, which is good. We could turn them all on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring oscillator 3 down 12 to 12. I'm going to bring oscillator 1 up to 12. And I'm going to... Ooh, whoops. Now I'm going to turn the volume down. I'm going to play it as I go. So yeah, it sounds really boring right now. But that's not a big deal. Um, one thing that we that's optional that we could do, whoops, is uh, we could detune these top two a little bit, maybe by like three or four in the opposite direction. And that makes it sound a little bit bigger. Um, but it's not necessary to do that because we could do that in our voicing tab, which is where I'm going next. So let's go into our voicing tab. And first of all, we're gonna bring unison up to however much you want and make sure you put the volume down because it's going to get loud. It doesn't sound like anything's changed yet, but that's because everything's just layered on top of each other. We have 10 um, of our oscillators, so that's like 30 oscillators, Oop, though our max is 16, so we're only hearing 16. Um, 30 oscillators playing at once. And then times that by the amount of keys we have um, playing or the amount of notes we have playing so it's a lot um, but they're all layered on top of each other so what I'm gonna do is do pan position and what's that what that does sorry is um, it takes each of those layers and it spreads them so it widens them 
So I don't, they're not all right in the middle. Some are off to the left, some are off to the right. So with and without. Yeah. Um, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my lower, um, my oscillator 3, which is the lower um, pitch, I'm going to bring that more to a square wave. I find that square waves are good for the bass or the lower notes, and then saws are for good for the higher notes. So I'll keep my oscillator 1, which is pitched up 1, I'll keep that as a saw, and oscillator 2 I'll bring to kind of a saw square wave, more on the saw side. And now I'm just going to play with the volumes until I get something I like. I usually put the um, bass down, or the lower notes down, and the higher notes down. Something like that, I guess, is nice. Now we could turn wavetable position on. And hear what that does. So it doesn't make a, not a noticeable difference to me, so I'm not going to put it on. Now the magic pitch cutoff. So I'll turn it on, and right away I'm going to go to this number, and I'm going to double click it to bring it down. And I'll bring this all the way to the right. And I'll just slowly increment this until I get a sound I want. So I'm going to play it and increment this by holding it and dragging it up. So I like it like that, maybe a little less detuned. And again, this is just taking each of the layers and it's um, like lowering the pitch by however much the amount is. So just like I said, was optional before. Um, we're just doing it in this um, tab instead of doing it on our oscillators. And uh, it's up to you whether you want to do it like that or not. So now I'm going to just choose Dimension Expander, which is going to widen the sound a little bit more. And also bring the volume down. So I like having the size down um, a lot. I don't like having it so that when I let go of the key, there's a giant delay. Um. And I think the dry wet's good around there. OK, now it's time for the magic. Or, well, I guess I'll do the magic after. So I'm going to do a low pass 4 on filter 1 where I have all of the uh, sound I'm routed to. And I'm going to bring the resonance down, way down like that. And I'm going to put envelope 1 on my cutoff and just bring that up. And I'll play around with the envelope, maybe a long attack. Maybe just turn down the resonance all the way. Yeah. So... I know I've said before and probably everyone thinks that you just turn the release up and you'll have a good um, like pad sound and like the attack up. But um, I mean, it's okay, but if you do it like this, when you press another note, you get like that weird, like it's already, the envelope's already up here, so you won't get the same um, effect as what I'm going to do right now. So I'll play this. Ah! Uh, sorry about that. Um, I should probably warn people about that. Accidentally double clicking. Okay, so that sounds pretty cool, but for effects one, I'm going to put the what I called magic before on, and that's just Massive's built-in reverb, just normal reverb, and I'll put the size up a lot, put the density up and the color up. So the color, if you watched my um, tutorials on sound design, the color is just how bright the uh, reverb is, so how much highs, essentially, are in your reverb, in your density is 
it's hard to explain, but you'll you'll you're it. Uh, I can't even talk right now. You can hear it when you put it up. So our size is giant, and I'm gonna put our wet dry way down, maybe like there, not way way down, but. I'm gonna just put our envelope back to normal. Maybe put the cutoff like that. And I really like bright pads, so I'll just turn the highs up and also bring the lows down a little bit. I don't want it cluttering the base if I had like a sub base in here. Ah, uh, keep doing that. I hate it. Fuck. And another thing we could do is if we route this um, F2 to parallel, and then we put another low pass and also bring that up and the mix down. We could have this at a set um, a set place, our cutoff, and then we could put an LFO on it. Just put that like that maybe. So it's kind of like a wobble, almost to the top and then below halfway. We could put this uh, LFO on our sine wave and turn off restart and put on sync maybe and do like something like four over one. So it's gonna go through one cycle every four bars. Uh, let me. stop for a minute. Okay, so. And one thing we could do to even make this a little cooler is put an LFO, the same LFO, on our dry wet. And we could do something like this. And now, just for uh, whatever sake I guess I will try to make a little melody. I think the easiest way to do this would be to test it on this over here and then just bring it down. So I'll show you guys how I would go about making a um, like pad sequence melody type thing. So. I'll play one.
So I'm just kind of doing it one at a time and then listening to hear it sounds. We could put that on the pads and hear how that sounds. I actually really like this. I might make a song afterwards. And our cutoff seems to be a little low, so I mean, we could turn that up if you wanted to. So yeah, I mean, that sounds really cool. I really like this, actually. Um, you could even go further, and you could, like, uh, if you're in Ableton or whatever draw you're in, um, you could put, like, built-in effects like a chorus or a flanger or a phaser or something. So, I mean, that's that, really. Um, if you wanted to do, like, make plucks out of this, one easy way would be to do something like this. So, same everything, and I'm just going to make it a, into a pluck instead. Um, I'll do insert two, and I'll do a low pass. Whoops. So, I'll go like this. And there we go, we have a pluck just by making a pluck envelope. And then if I just, whoopsie, if I just take this and I do like something like this. Like. And you could hear that the uh, reverb actually goes out, so maybe if I do maybe like this. Maybe inverse, invert it. Maybe even make it a little shorter. Yeah, I mean, you get the idea. It's a lot of uh, playing with everything. So.
so honestly, if you just use, or if you play around with the reverb and um, modulating it, either with envelopes or an LFO or performer or something, and then using the same LFO to maybe um, put a, put on like a cutoff of a filter or something. I mean, you can get some really cool pad sounds and pluck sounds. So, I mean, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I probably blabbed on way longer than I should have, but whatever. I mean, the more I blab about stuff, hopefully the more you learn about it and understand it. And hopefully seeing me work will inspire you to work and also maybe teach you something. <laughs> so thanks for watching. You can like, comment, subscribe if you want. You can say mean stuff to me in the, uh, in the comments, whatever. Um, but uh, thanks for watching and goodbye. Oh, and listen to my new stuff, my new music and whatnot. SoundCloud. It's on SoundCloud and Facebook, and no one ever checks it. It makes me sad. But um, thanks for watching anyway, and goodbye.